Alrighty, fancy seeing me here, eh? Two weeks in a row, what can I say? I'm a very consistent guy. Anyways, since I made my private equity debut and became a TikTok sensation overnight, I've been filled in a lot of DMs about the industry and the recurring question I always get is, Stephen, how do I actually get into private equity? So in this video, I'll be covering four things mainly. A quick overview of the private equity industry, what you should be thinking about, different routes to get into private equity, and then lastly, how I can help you with the process. Now, before we go any further, kindly tap the like button and appreciate my two week post and streak, obviously. And um, yeah, man, let's get into the video. Now, one thing people don't like to do in corporate is reinvent the world. So with that being said, can the editing team please kindly just cue the video where I explain what private equity is? Thank you very much. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry queuing now so let's take it back to basics you know what does private equity or pe actually mean well the meaning is kind of in the name it simply means an investment firm giving a company a lot of money for an ownership stake in that company in the form of equity in the hopes of a return over time now where private comes into play is that usually these companies are non-public entities which essentially means that they're not listed on any recognized stock exchange they're not listed at all they're simply private companies to summarize private equity firms would invest in private companies work on them for a certain period of time you know make sure that they're better make sure that they're doing good and then sell them to another pe firm or list them on the markets usually for like a big profit it's kind of like a house flip so you know you buy a house you work on fixing it up and then you sell it for a profit now typically private equity firms are quite small it's usually two 20-year veteran bankers who decide that they're tired of making millions for the banks and instead want to pocket some of that sweet nectar that's apparently buzzing around in private equity so you know they quit their jobs poach two of their favorite associates, convince their secretaries to jump ship, and then reach out to all the investors that they worked with in a bank in hopes of raising capital to pursue their innovative strategy of, you guessed it, buying and selling companies. Alrighty, now that we're clear on the basic concept of what private equity actually is, we need to delve slightly deeper before sending out any applications. In my opinion, there are two main things you want to consider before sending out any applications to any private equity firm or fund. And these terms are like interchangeable, so I use firm and fund a lot. But again, you should be thinking about divisions and strategy. Now, broadly speaking, there are usually three divisions in private equity and investment firms. So you have front office, middle office, and back office. Front office this represents the client facing division of the firm and is seen as the part of the business that brings in money. So the main teams that sit within this function is the investment team. Their main client is the companies they invest in and the money that they bring in is the return that they make on those investments in those companies. Another team that kind of fits into the bucket of front office is investor relations. In this instance, their clients would be the investors that they engage with. And then lastly, the fundraising team is also considered a front office gig as you're usually pitching to investors to raise money for the fund. Then we have middle office. The middle office function sits between the front office and the back office, obviously. Um, to be honest, the middle office term is more utilized in investment banks due to the large scale nature of like, you know, how investment banks are run. But some large private equity funds as well also have this function in place. And in the middle office, you would come across like unpopular roles like strategic projects, research, product management, which are super interesting roles, but no one really knows about them because all they care about is the front office. And then lastly, you have back office, which no one really wants to be in. But essentially, this is kind of like the heart of the organization and how the organization is run so usually you would have like compliance hr finance and you know the typical kind of like functions that you would see in any like organization right um so you know with that being said it's important to just make sure that you kind of familiarize yourself with all these different roles within um the different divisions and then kind of assess the skills needed for those roles and then see if they match like your skills right because the last thing you want to do is just apply for a role because it sounds sexy and then you don't have the skills to basically like you know back up the work right you don't want to be that awkward person that puts that you can do extensive financial modeling you maybe are able to like black through the interview process and then you get on the job and you can't do it right so it's important to really identify um, the roles that you want to like you know go for and are suited to your skill set so that way you can like you know send out more targeted applications now moving on to strategy this is also another important thing that you need to consider private equity firms usually have an investment investment strategy that they adhere to and it's usually their criteria for selecting investments so for example an investment strategy might be that 
the company only invests in consumer businesses and the tech space, making revenue of one to three million a year. Now, the main part to focus on here is consumer businesses in the tech space. Does that space generally interest you? Have you ever invested in any public consumer businesses in the tech space? Do you understand the current market? Do you envision any trends in that space? These are all potential questions that would come out in an interview. So it's important to apply to firms with strategies that you are genuinely interested in because you can talk about that for days on end in the interview. The last thing you'd want to do is apply to a fund that only invests in a paper business, for example, out of desperation when you know nothing about paper because they'll suss that shit out in interviews and even if you get the job you probably won't like you know a fund that literally only invest in paper unless you're Dwight Schrute or something so it's just important to make sure that you research a strategy that's kind of like aligned with your interest and something that you'd be super super keen on so that that way when you get to the interview your enthusiasm just kind of like shows naturally right so yeah two things division strategy just make sure that you understand like the division you want to work in and then the strategy that interests you and then that way you can start pinging off applications to those um, firms now to be honest the conventional route to PE is quite simple right you know you join an investment bank or consultant firm ideally from a summer internship and then you convert that into a grad role you cry yourself to sleep on your way home every day for the next two to three years and then you apply to a PE firm to cry some more seems pretty straightforward but anyways all jokes aside or am I joking? Um, another conventional route that a client actually told me about when I was trying to make the move into PE is that you should do in like an MBA program. Um, and the MBA program would usually like cover a lot of the theoretical aspects of business and firms see this as a stamp of approval to work in the industry. But quite frankly, like who has 30 to 50K for a flipping stamp after spending 50K on a flimsy certificate? Like, I just, I, I'm not really sure about that to be quite honest. And I don't really know much about the MBA route, but it seems like it's a lot more popular in the US from what I've seen anyways. And just disclaimer, like MBA stands for Masters in Business Administration. And it's usually kind of um, an extended higher qualification that you can get basically um, to show that you're capable. And it's kind of like higher than a Masters, um, but it's like super expensive and um, the caliber of people that do it are usually like CEOs and executives, people that have a fuckload of money or like people are trying to like make game changing careers kind of thing and pivot into like a different industry. But again, like it's usually sponsored by a firm, like no one's going to go fork out 30 to 40k, 40K for an MBA. But um, yeah like those are the conventional routes that are like well known <laughs> now if you were like me an unserious candidate in uni who didn't really know what an internship was till they graduated grow up like honestly just, just grow up but um all jokes aside once you've figured out the division that you want to work in and the strategies you would be interested in the best entry point is for an internship and honestly even if you're a grad or a three-year professional trying to change careers the internship route is the best route the truth of the matter is that private equity is still a very traditional industry where paying your dues is very much the norm so they really believe in working your way up i've literally seen people that worked in top tier consulting firms for five to six years succumb to doing an internship just so they could get in and I think what people need to realize is that once you get your foot in the door that's all that really that like, matters for you to be able to navigate your way around the industry another thing to do is like you know network you know in private equity it's very much a shoulder tap industry so it's very very rare to see like you know them advertising for roles at the junior level so networking is very very key once you've identified the firms you want to work in reach out to some of their staff to inquire about their recruiting cycles and drop your cv ask for like inform informative interviews and you know coffee chats and so on and so forth and also don't be afraid of taking up side missions right a recent grad must have reached out to me and said he had been offered like a corporate strategy role for a data services firm and he would have the opportunity to work on a potential m a deal but he was asking me that he wasn't sure if he should take it because it's not private equity and i was like bro you're literally gonna gain transactional experience from this role which is kind of like the creme de la creme that pe firms are looking for um so yes it's not private equity but that experience is so relevant and will put you in good stead when you do end up applying so it's just important to note that you know it's okay to kind of like 
take unconventional methods and routes to ultimately get into the industry. If that's something that you truly, truly want to work in, it's okay to kind of, you know, like get some sort of role that has a bit of relevant experience to then later land you in there. Like you don't have to go there straight in and most people really don't like, cause it's a very, very like competitive shoulder tap, like exclusive industry to get into, right? So you kind of have to get in by any means, but I would say free, Roots, unconventional roots anyways, the internships, networking and side missions. <laughs> Now, how can I help you with the process? If you're looking to get into private equity or just the corporate world in general, you can book me via Beyond Education website for a quick catch up call. And if I can't help you, I'll be sure to introduce you to someone who can. Yeah, I feel like this video is really gonna be quick. But um, with that being said, if you guys like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on post notes so you don't miss a thing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.